Glory to God. Well, let's open up the Word of God tonight and uh, open up to Romans 1.17. We'll start there. We're going to talk about faith. Faith. You know, uh, we're going to talk about it from a really basic standpoint because I'm a really basic person. <laughs> but, you know, we, we've all learned faith from good ministers, and, and we've been brought up, probably many people in here have been brought up in faith, Word of Faith churches, um, Brother Copeland, Brother Hagen, Brother Moore, um, several others, and, and that's a good thing. But as I've went through this in my own life, I, I have seen misconceptions that I've had at one time or another in my own life. And, and rather than talk about somebody else having misconceptions, much easier just to talk about me, right? Because I remember when I first learned about faith, um, well, of course, I grew up in a house where mom, mom and dad both taught about faith. And it was a good thing, but I learned about their faith, right? And as you're, when you're a kid, that's what you do. You learn about the faith of your parents. And then you grow up and you get a real, your own relationship with God. Well, I didn't grow up. I'm starting to now, <clears throat> but I, I grew down for several years. But when I came back to the Lord, I came back in probably a dire, needed to come back. How about that? How many have ever needed to come back to the Lord? <clears throat> but I need, what, what I wanted from God and from faith was to never have any problems. Anybody, right? I, I wanted the faith to never have to use faith, right? Because faith was what you had to have when you had problems, right? That's what I saw faith as. It was what you needed when there were problems in your life. So if there were no problems in your life, you wouldn't need faith, right? So I'm believing God for all the prosperity I can ever have, all the health I can ever have. Why? Because I don't want to have to live this faith life that, you know, you don't want to, I got to wake up every day in faith? I mean, am I going to have to overcome something all the time? And, and the answer is yes, by the way. People that aren't overcoming by faith are, are, are going under. I right? say, so, well, I know people that are doing real well and they're not faith people. No, you don't. If they're not living by faith, even if they're the just, and they're not living by faith, they're living a lower standard than they could. Because living by faith is truly the highest standard of life. I, w I went so far in, in believing faith was the way out of problems. I used to look at the Bible like I'd read like about Paul, like where he got beat and went here. And I was looking for where he missed it. <laughs> Seriously, because I'm like, you know, he's walking by faith. He must have missed it if he went somewhere and, and it didn't go well. How many have ever went somewhere and it didn't go well? Do, do you, sometimes you missed it, but sometimes you were right where you're supposed to be. Right. right. Because Why? Because a person of faith in a position that isn't going well can overcome. Right. A person of, not, of, of unfaith, if you will, won't you call it lack of faith, unfaith, they have no overcoming power. Right? right? right. And, and so, you know, I, I literally did. I looked for, you know, I'd look at like Daniel and Lions Den. I'm like, why do you have to go to Lions Den? Why didn't he just believe God and not go? Right? That's not how it works. He didn't even try to believe God and not go, did he? No. He just went trusting God. Slept in a lion's den one night, had some big pukushi pillows. Right? Right? And imagine what, what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, well, imagine what they saw. You know, because I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, man, couldn't they have done something to believe and not have to go through the fire? You know what the answer is? No. They, they believe God would save them no matter what. Right? right? And, and that's real faith. Real faith is knowing you can walk through this life and no matter what's, getting, what's coming before you, God will show you what to do. He'll, he'll rescue you. He'll take care of you. He'll keep you in the middle of the fire. He'll, he'll get you over whatever's coming against you. And, and that's faith. 
But, but to me, I didn't want to overcome. I wanted to go around, right? I wanted that faith that got you around the problems, not in the middle of the problems. And, and somehow I missed all these verses that said you'll go through the flood. Notice it said you'll go through the flood. It didn't say you don't have to go through the flood, but when you go through the flood, it said you're going to go through the flood, right? You're gonna, <laughs> people don't like this as well, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? You're going to. But it's not, it's, it's how you go into the flood that determines how you come out. That's why this verse, go back to the verse, we never read it, did we? It says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. In other words, God's goodness, everything that he is, his rightness, his, his way of doing, his way of being, it, it's revealed unto us by faith, unto faith, unto faith, and we grow and we increase in that faith on a constant basis. What's he saying? And then he says, as it is written, you're never getting away from faith. The just shall live. This, this isn't just, see, I, this, to me, this was a fire alarm. It wasn't a living. It was when something goes bad, go grab your faith alarm. Turn it on real quick because there's a fire. And you need your faith. And then as soon as the fire's out, Turn that off because you don't want to go around just living this way, <laughs> right? You don't want to have to overcome tomorrow too. Guess what? If you live by faith, overcoming will become natural to you, right? right? Yeah. Overcoming will become what you do. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it won't, you, you'll, you'll be walking along and say, oh, <clears throat> I had to overcome that. Oh, there's something, got it. Why? You're just living by faith. Nothing, nothing's going to stop you from doing what God has for you to do because you're in faith that you're going His direction. But we have to get away from these presumptuous types of faith. These things that, that say, I don't really like His answer. <laughs> right? You ever ask God, God, what do I need to do here? And He said, He told you what to do. And you said, mm, that can't be God. <laughs> Why? Because you didn't like the answer. But it's the only thing you can have faith for because that's his word now. You know, you get people all the time. They say, I prayed to God and he said, he said I should go see a doctor. But I, I don't think God would tell me to go see a doctor. You're wrong. God knows exactly where your faith is. Right? And he loves you. And if you need to go see a doctor, he'll tell you to go see a doctor. Even if you don't like it as much as I didn't like to hear stuff like that. Anybody in here don't like to hear stuff like that? I am so thankful for good doctors. Amen. You know what they're in? The business of healing people. God's business. Amen? We should pray for them more. They have a tough job. Grant, granted, we want to live by faith to faith. And see, what I wanted was to never have to come up against sickness rather than overcome it. Right? Right? Anybody ever had a symptom and you resisted it? You were overcoming sickness, right? Cause, and, and you know what? Sometimes you went and you got some medication. You were still overcoming sickness. Right. Say, well, that's not faith in God. It is too. You better go in faith. You're going to take that medicine. You better take it in faith. You're going to have surgery. You better do it in faith. If you're going to believe God for healing, you better make sure you're in faith. Not fake faith. Amen. Right? <laughs> we uh, got married young. I was 20. Kim was 18. We were married a year. And, of course, then it's time to have babies, right? 21 and 19. I don't know, what are we waiting on? Right? <laughs> So, right, it's about right, wasn't it? About a year. And we said, well, let's, let's try to have kids. So we started on the track to have kids. Everybody knows how that work. We're not going into <laughs> scientific parts of that. <laughs> year later, we still don't have any kids. A couple of years later, still no kids. So we're thinking, well, you know what? We need to believe God harder. <laughs> we got we to gotta get in faith, believe God harder. We're not living for God, but by golly, we can believe God for when we want something. Right? <laughs> now, we weren't living two days for him. 
But man, when we wanted something, we could believe God. So three or four years later, still no children. About the time I was 25, 24, we start thinking, hmm, maybe we need to find out why. Well, we found out why, and it was because of me. I've told this story before. Everybody put your jaws back up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was because of me. And so we thought, okay, what do we do next? And, and, and I remember, I'm not a big fan of doctors, and it didn't have anything to do with faith. I just didn't want to go see the doctor. <laughs> had everything to do with fear, actually. So it had zero to do with faith, right? right. And it's like, well, you don't have a doctor, doctor. They'll find something wrong with you even if you don't have anything, <laughs> right? That's just not true, guys. It's just not true. Use every available thing that God put here on this earth to use. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid of it. It's saved many, many of lives. Amen? Amen? So we decided that's maybe that's it, and they kept saying, you can do it, Dave, you can do it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm being thought, I'm, give, I'm being brought these thoughts. Well, you can just believe God and get healed. You can just believe God and he can heal you. If God, God made you, he can heal your body. You know, those are all good things that we've heard in the good faith churches all our life, right? You know, God made your body, he can heal it right back up, which is truth. But you got to believe that. You, 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 don't, you don't get in fear to believe, no. right? Being afraid of something is not faith. Not wanting to do something or go through something is not faith, right? So I'm saying, well, okay, I'll go. So I went one time, and I did not like it, and I'm not even going to say why. I didn't like it. I can tell you why, because I was still in fear. There's other reasons, but that's why. So I come back out of that, and I'm like, you know what? We're just going to believe God. We're not going through this. We're just going to believe God. Is that faith? No, it's not faith at all. It's kind of like what Brother Moore was talking about. I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing. The last two, you know, the, from Southwest Believers. And, and it was, it's a cop-out. It's a cop-out. Because really, what you're either looking to do is blame God later, right? I was believing. I don't know why I didn't have, didn't help, right? I be, Lord, I believed you. I believed you. I don't know why. And well, on all the time, God would have been saying, yeah, and I, I told you where you were. You needed to go see a doctor. Why? God knows where you are. Right. Right? He knows right where you are. And if you'll examine yourself, he'll show you where you are. Remember the verses we used the uh, last few weeks? Examine yourself. Where's that at? It's in the Bible, right? First, uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It says, examine yourself. See if you be in the faith. You know, you need to watch out for you having a preconceived idea of how God's going to do something. Yeah. Right? Because then when you don't like it, you'll say, well, that can't be God. Why? Because you've got a preconceived idea of how he's going to do it. You think Paul thought that God was going to send him to prison, going to have him, you know, to, just to save the jailer? Because that's why he was there. That's why he was there. Jailer got saved. You reckon God would do that for one person and their household? You know? What, what pr presumptuous faith is faith that decides how God's going to do something then wonders why he didn't. Right? <laughs> and so I'm wondering why we're not having kids. <laughs> you know, a few years are going by now. Getting up there, 26, 27, still no kids. Right? Reminds me, it, yeah, and you guys may have heard this story, but it reminds me of that story about the guy that, that he had a nice house, but it was sitting real close to the river, and they were having a bunch of rains, and the sheriff came to his house, said, it's going to flood. You want to go on, you want to go ahead and get out of here? And he said, no, I prayed. God's going to rescue me. Okay. So the sheriff leaves. Flood waters start coming up, and there's just a road left now. First responders come down. 
maybe we better get you out of here. All you can see is your road right now. He said, no, God's going to save me. Okay, go on. So floodwaters come up, and they're in, the, they're in his house. He's in the second level now. So the boat comes down. Says, hey, floodwaters coming up. All right? You want us to take you out of here? Oh, no, God's going to save me. Floodwaters come up. He's on the roof. Helicopter comes by. He says, no, no thanks. God's going to save me. He dies. He goes to heaven. He said, God, I thought you were going to save me. He said, I sent the sheriff. I sent the responders. I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter. How many things could I have sent to save you? But he had presumptuous faith. When we decide already what God's going to do and how he's going to do it, then we forsake our mercy. Amen? God is so merciful. He's so kind. He'll take the smallest speck of faith. He even said, he said, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to a sycamine tree, be, be rooted up and cast into the sea, and, and it'll be done. Or be moved over there. What's it say? Be moved over there? I don't even know what a sycamine tree is. <laughs> but I can imagine they were sick of mine. <laughs> But God's looking for real faith. In, in, in Peter, they, he calls it precious like faith. He's looking for a faith that, that, is, that, that is unwilling to compromise his word, his way. Amen? But, but we've got a brain. We've got flesh. And, and we got our way. And so I'm believing, or at least I'm saying, I'm believing. Why? Why am I believing? Because I don't want to go see the doctor. Right? Selfish. How selfish is that? You guys still love me? Because I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> right? Faith, faith that's only based on you is selfish faith. If you're saying, I, I'm, I'm going to believe God because I don't want to go through it, how many people are you affecting with your believing that's not real? How many lives are you affecting? Hmm? Right? <laughs> how, many li- how many lives we could, could we affect trying to be right? I'm right. I know I'm right. I'm right. And I'm right. And I'm going to do it my way. I'm right. I'm glad Jesus didn't say that. What, what if he'd have come to, when they came to arrest him, say, now, nah, I'm right. You guys go on. I'm, I'm righteous. I've never sinned. You got no right to me. I've never done anything wrong. What if Jesus would have said that? We'd all be on our way to hell right now, wouldn't we? But he took our punishment. He sacrificed for us. Faith does that. Faith works by love. And faith does those things. Amen? Amen. And so I'm saying I'm believing. I'm not believing. Right? (laughs) I mean, now I see it. Back then, why couldn't I see it? Well, first of all, I was ignorant. Second of all, I was stupid. Third of all, I was selfish. Right? Fourth of all, I didn't care. Right? I'm happy. I can get by. I can get by without kids. You know, God knew better than that. There are people that can get by. I couldn't. There were things he needed to show me that, ha- that would only come through that child. I'm not saying that's for everybody. For me. Thank God he's merciful. So one day, Kim picks up a book about adoption. And she starts reading it. I'm like, oh, no. Now something else. (laughs) (laughs) Something else now. But she starts talking to me about it. I'm like, that seems good. There's no doctors involved in that. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, that's where I was. (laughs) We could do that, right? We could do that. But she grabbed a hold of it by faith. She got a word from the Lord, and she grabbed a hold of it by faith. And then, and I won't say slowly, but pretty quickly, because this all happened pretty quickly when we finally got a hold of it. 
So I got a hold of it through her because she said you're going to get a hold of this. <laughs> no, she showed it to me, and I'm like, you know, you're right. And, 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 you know, and then you think, okay, this is settled. Now we'll do it this way. There's still a lot of overcoming to do. Guess what? The just will live by faith. When you, when you begin to overcome, it's not time to say, okay, thank God I finally overcome. No, you keep looking. You keep searching. You keep walking this out. And, you know, because the next thing is, well, you got to have a home study. you got to have these people come and look at you. And I'm like, I don't want people coming to my house. I don't want, you know, I'm, why? Because you're negative. What? You're full of fear and, and negativity. And, and you're thinking of every reason why this won't work now. The devil's trying to steal your faith. He was trying to steal our faith. And, and, and we only had this much. Now, we thought we had this much. But we only had this much, and that's what we had. And, 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 I, and I know one day later I was telling this story in Bible study, and I could almost see God coming down and saying, okay, I'm going to find that faith that you got. And he said, oh, disobedience, unwillingness, it's in here, you know. And he's, and because God is so merciful, he's looking for a way into my life. And he's saying, fake faith, get that out of there, that's not real. And oh, there it is. I got it. I can now help Dave and Kim. And he he takes his mercy and and he wraps his mercy around it like that. Now my faith is this big. Why? Because my little speck is surrounded by his grace and his mercy. Amen? And, and, and as, as his grace and mercy hold us up, nothing we go through phases us. We hear, oh, uh, she's born, and if, she, if we don't get this, she's going to go to the state. And this, and, and there's, there's lawyers and legal stuff, and, and it's all a big hurry. And it's a big deal. But our little bitty faith, wrapped in his huge mercy and grace, we were unwilling to let go. And he got us through. God's merciful. He's merciful when, when we are, are small. And, and when you think you're big, he's still merciful because you're not as big as you think you are. Amen? Amen. And, and, and he'll take that little bit of faith, that little bit of faith that you got, because that's all he's looking for is just a, a, give him a crack, and he'll come in, and he'll take that. And, and, and this faith that we're to live by, it's, it's, it's something that's ongoing because you're going to go through more. And, you know, even in your life, you're, do I buy a house? Do I buy a car? Do, do I send my kids to public school? Do I send them to home school? Do I, do I go to the doctor? Do I not go to the doctor? There's a thousand questions that your faith has to overcome. And what it overcomes, first of all, is you got to examine yourself. And you got to say, okay, where am I at? Amen? Let's look at another verse. Mark 11. Mark 11. Because there's opposition to your faith. And many times that opposition is in your eyes and it's in your ears. There's opposition. There's a contender to the champion. Amen? There is a contender to the champion. Faith has never lost. It will never lose. Real faith has never been beaten. Ever. Doubt and fear have contended against it and never won. Never. Not real faith. People are sitting there saying, well, now I've believed. No. You can't say that. Real faith has never lost. And and the more we're willing to, to say, wait a second, I was in faith. And the more we're willing to say that, what we're really saying is God failed me. And that's what the devil wants. He wants you to believe that with all your heart because if you believe that, you'll never believe God for anything else again. Why? Because he failed you. If he can fail you once, he'll fail you again. Say, well, he didn't fail me. It just wasn't his will. Was it in his word? Was it in his word? Then it's his will. 
We don't need to, we're, we're looking for excuses to not be in real faith. Real faith will take you right through the middle of the fire and bring you out at the other side completely unhurt. The, neither will the flame kindle upon thee. Amen? It, it'll take you in just like the three Hebrew children. When you come out, you won't even smell like smoke. Right? You, you, you probably just come out and say, man, that was kind of neat. Do you see what God did? Real faith will take you places and, 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 and bring you through things that, that fake faith will try to go around. And, and fake faith hurts. It hurts. It, 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 is the, it is the number one scripture for tradition. It is. Lord, if it be your will, heal them. That is in the first book of traditions. <laughs> Chapter 1, verse 1. Right? And, and these are things that we can't be okay with anymore. God is merciful to our ignorance. He is. I was ignorant of, in so many ways. And God said, you know what? Just give me something. Just give me something. And when I gave him something, he turned my life around. He turned my life around forever. And, and that's what he does. That's what real faith, working by love, will do. Amen? Where did I say to go? Mark 11. We've been there before, haven't we? Mark 11:22. Mark 11:22. Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. What's he saying? He's saying, have faith in God. It's a, it's, you know, some, the things that Jesus says sound so simple. You know, he says them like, he said, if you have faith, say under that tree, go move over there and it'll do it. You're like, really? <laughs> right? I haven't even believed my stuffed up nose to stop. You're saying I can move a tree. What he's saying is if you have faith, to do that, yes. you'll say it. If you have faith to do, you'll say. Yes. Amen? Yes. It's a big difference in trying to say it to have faith. He says, have faith to say it. We're trying to say it to have faith. Right? Man, I was speaking all kinds of stuff when I was believing, and so did not ever have to go back to the doctor again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's the Lord that healeth me. But man, 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes I am healed. Man, I'm saying, why? Because I don't want to go see the doctor. Right. And, and God's saying, all that's true. Go see the doctor. <laughs> right? A lot of people don't like this. Amen? You're going to have to overcome something in your life. And it's going to be fear-based against you because fear is the weapon against faith. Amen? I remember, you know, I'll speak to this because Mrs. Moore has spoken about it before. I remember when Ramsey got up to school age. We had to decide. Homeschool, public school. Big deal. Now, see, when I was in school, it's like mom said, you're not going home. <laughs> out of my house. Let that teacher have you for a while. And that wasn't even an option when I was a kid. Homeschool. Man, if I even stayed home from school, it was the most miserable day of my life. We purposely didn't get sick. <laughs> Mom, my temperature's only 103. I think I can go. <laughs> it's not fun to stay home in my house. And then when, you, when we got older, it was like, you don't feel good. Orange juice scriptures get in your room. Vitamin C and scriptures. That was her prescription. Worked, too. And you were back in school the next day. Why? Because you were having a miserable day <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You'd do anything to get out of that bedroom. <laughs> but, but, you know, we were at that place where, you know, she's getting ready to go to school. Um, what do we do next? And, and we're praying. We're praying and believing God. But in praying, we had to get past our fears because we had been to school. I, I saw how I handled it. <laughs> Don't handle it the way I did. Amen? <laughs> handle it right. Be full of the Holy Ghost. 
and be the light you're supposed to be in the public schools. And if you're homeschooled, because that's what God's chosen for you to do, then be the light you're supposed to be there. Be what you're supposed to be where you're supposed to be. Right? right? It's people's job to hear. It's parents' job to hear from God to know what to do. And we cannot base that on fear, and we cannot base that on somebody else's faith. I can't come to you and say, I really have the faith that your kid can make it. It ain't going to do you any good. Right? I can hook with your faith, but you have to be the one to decide. But you also have to examine yourself and see if you're in faith. Am I doing what I'm doing, whether it be sending them to school or, bring, or not sending them to school? Am I doing what I'm doing in faith? If you are, you're exactly, and your children are exactly where they should be. Amen? Amen. And so we're believing God, and we're looking for answers. And Kim goes to a Bible, ladies' Bible study one day. And we're still believing God, and we're, we're, not, we're not confused. We're looking for an answer. God's not the God of confusion. He's the God of answers. And so if you'll seek him, you'll find the answer. And so one of the ladies talks about that day, about how God told her to send her kid to public school because who's going to be the light if we pull all the light out of the public schools? And that that doesn't mean that word's for everybody. Don't send me cards and letters unless they're nice. If they're nice, I love them. But that's not, that was a word for us that day. That was a, that was a word for us. We're, talk, we're talking about faith for life today. Okay? Faith for life. Just like the classes we have. Faith for life. How does faith work in your life every day? Because every day you're going to need faith for something. We needed faith for that moment in time. If you have children or have had children, you need faith for that moment in time. No matter what you do, I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. That's not my place. Amen? Amen. I can tell you this. Our daughter chose a uh, college in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. It's called Washita Baptist College. And she later told us, she said, I'm glad I went to that Christian-based college because I think I might have gotten off had I went to another. Now, we believed God for her to go to the right college. Because why? I had already went crazy for my whole six months of college. (laughs) Well, you mean college is longer than that? Whoa. That's how far I made it. Got my year of football in and said, okay, that's good. Met this really pretty girl, so I wanted to get married. All right. But, but these are things that we have to use our faith for. These, these are important things in our life that if we choose not to live by faith and just to go by our carnal mind, then we're going to miss it. Right? It says, have faith in God. Right? Go back to the verses. Jesus' answer said, have faith in God. Verse 23. Verily I say unto you, whosoever say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's the contender of faith. It's not doubt in your head. That's where doubt starts. It gets in here, and it starts talking to you. It says, you know what, I don't think you're going to make it. I don't think you can do this. You're not going to have enough money. You know, you believed God before, and it didn't work. How many have ever heard that? Huh? The devil's mean. He don't love you. And he surely ain't trying to help you. And your carnal mind is too stupid. I'm sorry. That's why we have to renew it. It will listen to anything. Do you know that anything that you put in your ears, it'll hear? Just like that. It won't even say, hey, there's somebody trying to put something in me. Will you please stop it? Because I don't like it. It'll just hear it. That's what it'll do. You put it in front of your eyes, your eyes will just see it. Right? Yeah, that's true. People say, I saw, I saw that, but I didn't want to. That's, <laughs> well, it's because your eyes were open. If you don't want to see it, shut them. Right? And this is how doubt gets in. 
it, you start looking and listening to things, and, and, and then, then your well-meaning friend comes up to you and says, yeah, I believe God for that, and he told me no. You know, he, he didn't, he, well, I wasn't supposed to get healed because I was learning something through that sickness. <laughs> the only thing I ever learned by being sick is that I don't like it. Right? Right? And, and, and that's what I learned from being sick. And, and I'm not thankful for any time I missed God. I'm thankful that he used those times and taught me not to miss him again. But I'm not thankful that I missed it. Right? I don't want to get on my back so I can look up. That's in the third book of traditions. God put me on my back so I could look up. No. No. God said, why weren't you looking up all the time, son? Get up. Huh? Huh? God's a good God, and he's got very, when, it, when, it, when, it, when Jesus said something and it sounded easy, is because truly by faith it is. Right. Truly by faith it is easy. Back to the verses. I'm, I'm, I'm on so many rabbit trails right now, I don't know where we're going. Be thou removed and cast into the sea. Oh, and that's where we're going. And shall not doubt in his heart. Doubt is the contender of faith. Doubt and fear, the, the, the word doubt means to contend. Literally means to contend. It means to oppose. It, it is the opposition of faith. And so what happens is the minute you decide to, to be, be in faith, the opposition begins to come. And so God's got your faith. And, and, and what, what, the, what doubt's trying to do is get to your heart. It, it'll, it'll start in your eyes, it'll start in your ears, and, and it'll start from your friends and, and people that don't know any better. And the next thing you know, you say, hmm. And the minute you say, hmm, Rebuke it, because you're entertaining a thought that's about to drop in your heart, and you don't want that doubt. You don't want that doubt, and God's given you a word, right? God's given you a word. He, he, he said he's going to pull you through. He said, go this direction, do this thing, watch this, do this, walk this way, and you're doing it. You say, ooh, can't walk that way. Look, God. He said, yeah, you can and you say, oh, no, your eyes, oh, there's fire, 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 fire. No. Walk. Walk. God, there's a mountain. Yeah. Climb. Climb. What, what's he saying? I got you. I got you. You do what I say and don't doubt. It's just like Peter. Why, why did you doubt? Why did you fear? You were walking on water. Why did you fear? And that's what he would say to us. Why did you quit faithing? <laughs> maybe not good English but that's what he would say why did you quit faithing you should have continued faithing instead of fearing amen, amen? amen. and had you continued in the faith and, and thank God when we were believing for Ramsey that we held tight to that little grain of faith it was like a gift of faith in Kim's heart and, and, and it was that little grain and God got a hold of it and, and when we refuse to doubt, when we refuse to let something contend against our faith, and, and we say, I'm not just doing this today, I'm doing this tomorrow. You know what? You'll get less and less. Why? Because I'm going to keep doing this. This isn't something I just decided to pick up today. It's something I do every day. I'm the just. I live by faith. And you begin to walk it out. And, and when your child gets old enough to go to school, you do that. And, and when your wife gets a, gets a cancer diagnosis. Right? It's been a good year. The Lord helped us overcome. Amen? It's been a good year. But thank God for the direction we got to go. People say, well, and I've had actually people question me, why didn't you just believe God? We did believe God with everything that was in us. Right. We believed God. Amen. We examined our faith immediately to see where we were and to see what God, where God would direct us. And we, and we consulted the Moors. And we, we, we prayed with them, and they gave us counsel. And then we prayed. 
And we consulted God. And we said, this is the direction we're supposed to go. Right? And, and, and you know what? Not an easy decision. Because if I, we'd have had the kind of faith I had when we were trying to have kids, we just said, oh, no, we're just going to believe God. We're just going to believe God. You know, when somebody says it like that, you already know they're not in faith. <laughs> I'm just going to believe God. I'm believing. What are they doing? Who, who are they trying to convince? Themselves. Yeah. Right? It was a good year. Because we heard from God. We did what he said. And my wife is healed. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But, but this, what, what if I'd have missed it at, at Ramsey? What if I'd have missed it some, or we'd have missed it and, and just kept missing it and missing it? When that time came up, we, we would have just went to the doctor, but we'd had no faith for the doctor. I don't want to go to the doctor without God before me. Amen. Because if God goes before you, you've nothing to fear. You're going to come out. He's going to give them, I like what Miss Diane says, he's going to put his super on their natural. And it's going to come out good. I don't know if that's her quote or not, but I'm giving it to her today. (laughs) But, but, But that... That kind of faith, that first of all, you have to know. And people say, well, it didn't take faith because the doctors, the doctors didn't do anything. They didn't do anything that God didn't give them the ability to do and put his super on their natural. And we were able to be a witness. The doctors and the nurses still talk about how great Kim was going through all this. I mean, we already knew what a nice person she was crazy she married me but other than that she's nice right why because everybody that goes in there doesn't smile why because it's painful it's not fun sometimes there's days you don't feel so great but you know what by faith you can still smile by faith you can still go on by faith knowing that God has got you Your faith is in God. And every time that doubt tries to rise up, you say, no, no, God's got me. Doubt, you cannot even get near my heart. You'll not contend against my faith. You'll not oppose my faith. We're believing God and he will get us through. Amen. And these are the things. And and you know what? We could have got presumptuous. Oh, we're, we're, we're ministers. We work at the church. We, we can just believe God, and that'll just go away. That's like saying, God, you owe me for working at the church. <laughs> That's ridiculous. We owe him for working at the church. Right? Faith, the walk of faith, it is an ongoing process. It's from faith to faith that the just shall live by. It's not just that day is faith. It's from faith to faith. In other words, when I get through this day, tomorrow it's faith. The next day it's faith. The next day it's faith. And, And your faith is your receiver. And it's not receiving the ability to not have to be in faith. Right? It's receiving the overcoming ability of God to, to go through and go overcome anything that's going to come against you in your life. Because guess what? In your life, some things are going to come. You're in the world. Right? <laughs> are you? I hope you are. <laughs> some of them look a little spacey out there. But you're in the world. And in this world... In heaven, we're going to run across fields and never get poison ivy. But in this world, if you're going to run across the field, you better have direction from God or at least be listening so you can turn when the poison ivy comes up because we're in the world. And I'm not giving you bad news. I'm giving you good news. Fear not, I've overcome the world. The world has tribulation. But fear not, Jesus has overcome the tribulation for you, for me. I used to use that verse all the time because 
I didn't want to go through tribulation. <laughs> right? Well, Jesus overcame it. I don't have to go through tribulation. Jesus, over yeah, he overcame it so that you could overcome it. Right? If it's in the world, you're going to see it. You're going to be around it. It's going to be a part of it. But why, why would you need faith if not? You need to get salvation and then just quit. I'm saved. Right? You wouldn't need anything else. Faith is the overcoming power of God. It, it is what, how we reach in and we grab everything that he has by grace. Yes. And, and we receive that mercy. And he takes whatever faith we have in that situation. He says, I see what you got. Here's what you need to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. People say, well, why can't you just do what you got? Because that's not the faith of God. Faith of God is the faith that he tells you you got. Right? Right? That's examining yourself. What, 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 did, what did David say? He said, search my heart. See if there's any wicked way in me. He's not just saying, see if there's something I'll do wrong. He's saying, see if there's something that's keeping me away from you. What's keeping me from serving you as much as I want to? I want to get rid of that. Amen? And, and, and that's, that's what we should say. I'm going to live this day by faith. I'm going to walk this day by faith. If, if God says, believe me for the money for a house, I'm going, to, I'm going to believe him for the money for a house. But if God says, hey, your faith is in payments right now. I had payment faith. For, I still got some payment faith. Sorry. But I ain't paying for somebody else's house. <laughs> You'll say, I'll just rent until I can buy. Okay. Money's going somewhere. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Glory to God. We live by faith. We make our daily decisions by faith, no matter how big, no matter how small, if you're living by faith, nothing's going to surprise you because no matter how big it is, you were already in faith to start with. So you got faith right there to come against it. Yeah. Right? If the wall starts falling, whoop, nope, gotcha. Why? Because you were prepared to overcome it before it came against you. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That does mean, first of all, weapons are going to be formed against you. Right? Yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> right? People don't like to hear that stuff, do they? I used to hate to hear that. I'd say, no, no, it's not going to prosper. It's not even going to make it. No, it says in the Bible, weapons will be formed against you. Can't get away from it. You're going to walk through the fire. We're going to walk through the flood. But how we walk, how you go in determines how you come out. Amen? Amen? Think about Daniel in line, and we'll close with this because I don't even know what time I started. Think about Daniel. He was not doing a thing wrong, was he? But the law that they changed, they just didn't like him, so they set up a law because they knew he wouldn't go against the law of God, right? And so they set up a law that he couldn't do what, it, he couldn't be who he was. I won't even say he couldn't do, he couldn't be who he was. He was a prayer. He prayed for the nation. He prayed for the people. He was a prayer. And every day at the same time, he prayed three times a day, right? Wasn't it three times a day? And they passed the law. You can't do that. He knew the law, but he knew, the, he knew a higher law. Now, I don't want people to take that wrong because we got people in the church that say, I don't care what the Moors say. God said this. In your life, that's fine. In the church, that's not. The direction for the church comes through the head of the church that he's placed over the church. Amen. Do you know that I don't say, ooh, I got a good idea, let's do this today. <laughs> Never. If I do, I usually get another idea from one of them that says, how come we're doing your idea? <laughs> Why? Because we want God's vision in the church. Amen. And that's how he's chosen to do it, through the head of the church. Not by committee. Find that in the Bible for me. Where, where it says, make, get, a, get a committee together and decide what's supposed to happen in the church. Did you know that... No. <laughs> what was I talking about before that? Daniel. Daniel, thank you. Get away from that. 
That's, that's just the Bible, okay? Read it for yourself. You know what? I found over and over again, it's true, and it works really good. Many of the problems that are out there don't come against us because the Lord showed them exactly how to do this. And, and, and if we follow the leader, right, then, then the under-shepherd that God put over the church, then we'll find things going well. Amen? Amen? But Daniel, he hadn't done anything wrong. They put a law in place against him. And they, they, so they, they tell the king, and the king's mad at himself, which is good. You know, he didn't even get mad at the people that did that yet. <laughs> yet. But he's mad at himself. Why? Because he, not only did he love Daniel, Daniel was prosperous for his country. He loved Daniel, and Daniel was good for his nation. Because everywhere Daniel went, good things happened. Right? Because as King Nebuchadnezzar finally said, your God is God. After he saw four people in the fire. So Daniel, king comes and says, I can't do anything about it. Your God, who you serve day and night, he'll save you. The king speak in faith. The king speak in faith. All the faith he had, that's what he said. Daniel still hadn't said a thing. You'd have thought Daniel would have been pleading his case. King, you knew I did this. I'm, I'm your friend. You, sh- let's, let's change the law. Let's, you can do anything. You're the king. But he didn't even plead his case. He didn't even act like he was worried. Right? He goes in. No, he didn't fight it. You know, everybody think, everybody, they probably show pictures of him. And he, oh, no, you're not getting me in there. You're not. No, Daniel went like this. Can you open the door for me? Okay. Why? First of all, he was trusting God. God put him in that place. And the king said, you're God whom you serve. He'll save you. That's right. Daniel went willingly. He sacrificed himself. He went willingly. Had, had he, right? Mm-hmm. He, 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 was, he was someone who decided that I'm going to trust God every day. Every day, every moment of the day, no matter what comes against me, I'm not going to quit trusting God. Therefore, he was not shaken when this happened. These are the things that we got to look at when we look at the Bible. We can't look at these storybooks and these cartoons and these these movies that are made for TV and we see Abraham sweating and, and, and just grieving over the death of his child. He wasn't grieving. He'd already received him back. That's not real faith. And that's where we get our image of faith from the made-for-TV movies. Faith, our image of faith should come from the Bible, from a Daniel and and, and a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, you know what? We're not going to bow to your image. And if you throw us in the fire, we're still not going to bow to your image. They weren't about to die. And they didn't think they were about to die. They didn't even say they were about to die. I know you guys have heard Brother Moore teach on this, but I'm going to remind you. They said, O king, we hear what you say. We don't even have to consider this. Our God, who we serve, will save us. And if you throw us into the fire, I'm going to, I'm going to phrase it so you can understand it, we still won't bow to you because our God will save us. Basically, they're saying he'll save us and he'll save us. Here's our two options. We're going to be saved. I know it's been taught different. They said, well, if he doesn't save us, we'll be burned up. Then they for sure wouldn't bow to Nebuchadnezzar then, right? So I guess that's true. (laughs) No, they walked by faith every day. They they chose to eat vegetables instead of meat. You got to have a lot of faith to do that. I got to believe. <laughs> I won't go any further with that. <laughs> but what, they, what, what you really find out about them is they chose to hear from God and do things exactly as he said. Daniel chose to hear from God and walk out every day what he was supposed to do and, and believe God that he would help him to overcome any obstacle that came against him. And as he did, the lions were just one more obstacle. 
and, and, and we know they were hungry because right after he got out, they ate a whole bunch of families. <laughs> they had a feast of all the people that had Daniel thrown in there. So we know that it wasn't we had sickly lions, right? <laughs> you hear people say stuff like this. Well, there's probably something wrong with the lions. No. What was it that somebody said that the Egyptian army drowned in, in an ankle-deep water or something like that? Or, people come up with all kinds of theories to disprove walking by faith. And there, there is no theory against it. That's called religious tradition. And the truth is, is if we go back to the verse we started with, faith to faith, the just shall live by it. Faith to faith, the just shall live by it. Tomorrow, you're going to come up against a situation where your faith will be required. Your decision to use that faith will to decide how prepared your faith is for the next thing that comes up. Because every day, every, maybe three or four different hours in a day, something's going to come. And, and you know, a lot of people say, well, it's not really a big deal. I can really decide whether I buy that car or not. Can you? I've bought a whole bunch of cars I shouldn't have bought. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, I've gotten bills that say, huh, let, let me scratch this out. Ooh, I'd have $5 left that month. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> That's stupid. And I've done it more than once. None of you guys have, so I'm just telling you, don't do that. Walk by faith. Everything we do is by faith. And it's not just the big things. It's not just the fire alarms. It's not. It's everything we do. Have something against what's coming against you and and what we want to have against it is the overcoming power of God and by faith we'll have that every time it comes up amen, amen? amen. we won't have presumptuous faith no. right that's head faith you don't like the way you don't like the option right I didn't like the option the option was go to the doctor or believe God and actually, the only option was, if by faith, was go to the doctor. But I chose presumptuous. So I'm just going to believe God. I don't have to go to the doctor. You know what? If God told you to go to the doctor, you have to go. Let me go over here. If God told you not to buy that car, you shouldn't have bought that car. If God told you, I'll switch it around just so nobody's offended. To homeschool your kids and you didn't homeschool them, then you need to go back to homeschooling. If God told you, if God told you, not you told you, right? <laughs> Faith, it's real easy to hear yourself and, and, and you try to mimic God. Oh, Dave, don't go to the doctor. Believe me. Right, and you can see the stones with the and the tab Ten Commandment tablets and Charlton Heston and oh yes, Lord, yay Lord, yay Lord, no doctor for Dave. <laughs> and I don't care how deep your voice gets, I don't care how big a movie scene you play, if it's not God telling you what to do it, it won't work and it's not faith. But the minute you step in and say, God, I missed it. Show me where to go next. He'll give you a plan. He'll put a Ramsey in your future. My, my Ramsey was in the thicket. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a merciful God. He'll bring it back and he'll, he'll restore to you everything you thought you could have missed and more. Amen. That 25-year-old girl bought a house today. Glory to God. I am so pleased at the things that God's done through her and, and the things that he showed me in my life and, and his fatherhood to me. It changed my life, taking the time to say, God, I trust you. I'm sorry. We'll go your direction now. And when I did, he grabbed that little speck, that little speck of faith, he wrapped it in grace and mercy. And man, I, to tell, have me tell that story two weeks after it happened, you'd have thought I was a faith giant. And he let me believe I was. Until he showed me how much further he could take me. 
Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. He's a good God. He's doing good things. He wants such good things for us. But, but we can't be fake. We can't be unreal with who we are and where we're at. We got to know. We got to know because there are people who, no matter what came against them tomorrow, they could say, no. And it would stop right there. There's others that would say, no. And God would say, okay, I need you to do this, this, and this. Everybody's at a different spot. Examine yourself. See if you be in the faith. And do the, be willing to do the things that God shows you to do in every situation, at every time, so that we don't miss those things. Because we don't want to be at the wrong place at the wrong time hearing the wrong thing. Right? We've had people that came here and they said, God said go. And so we went. And I said, did you sit down long enough to hear in 2020? <laughs> right? Well, listen to the whole sentence. You know, so many times we hear exactly what we want to hear. Right? I remember one time I, I gave Mrs. Moore a plan. I said, I think we ought to do this. And she goes, yeah, I like it. And then I started to walk off and she says, but. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Why? We want our plan. Why? Because my plan's the easiest. <laughs> right? My way is the easiest. And God says, it may be easy, but I need you to go through that fire. And, and, and that flood, don't worry about it. It won't overtake you. Just keep going. Don't look for the easy way out. Look for the Jesus way out. Follow him in every way by faith and receive. Amen?